sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Just as a note of introduction for People that are watching this on video and may not know what's going on and why there's not a beautiful choir and organ behind me. Eight days ago, an arsonist set three fires in our church. Fortunately, a fireman was answering, coming home from another call and saw the blaze. He got his co-workers out there in enough time to save the sanctuary and the building. But it, the fire was started in our nursery and upstairs in one of the... Uh, classrooms which did damage but worst of all they started a fire in our library which smoldered and smoked and destroyed the front entrance to the building <coughs> destroyed the library and hit sent heavy smoke and soot throughout all of the building so we will be coming to you from different places for the next several months you know I've shared with you guys in the past, a story about two little girls 
The Lord knew what he was doing when he did not give me dollars. Okay? I'd, have been, I'd have been handcuffed and taken away about the time the recording started. But there are two little girls at the church, one of the churches that I used to serve, and they just stole my heart away. Their names are Adeline, I'm sorry, Addison and Adeline. And they are roughly now 10 and 9 years old. Their grandmother wrote me this week. And she told me that she had explained to the girls about the fire at our church. To which little Adelin replied, Somebody hurt a heaven church. Somebody hurt a heaven church. Yes, my dear sweet Adelin, somebody hurt a heaven church real bad. And if you girls happen to see this video, Remember that Pastor Rudy misses you and loves you dearly. I don't know about you guys, but I never like hearing the phone ring at like 2 a.m. in the morning. Since I've become a pastor, I hate it even more. <laughs> because, see, for experience has taught me that there's about a 99% chance that on the other side of that line is some form of bad news. As I reach for the phone at that time of morning, I am praying for a wrong number. <laughs> That's my best hope. And my phone rang at 2 a.m. eight days ago. A fireman told me that our church was on fire. I arrived as quickly as I could get dressed and drive from Bamberg to Denmark. Fleetwood was already on the scene. I want to share with you, and I probably shouldn't share this with you, but I will share with you that my first thoughts upon arriving at the scene and seeing what was going on, my first thoughts had nothing to do with overcoming evil with good. As a matter of fact, had I been able to act on those thoughts, I would have certainly broken some of the Ten Commandments and likely been put away for life. And it's taken a while for that to pass. So I'm a little bit better now, but just a little. <laughs> As I get, in, get into today's message, I know a lot of you that have known me for a while now, you figured out that I'm just a big kid at heart, about 17 years old or so. I love sports, I love games, I even love comic books. One of my favorites was The New Mutants. Four years ago, they made a movie about this particular comic scene, and one of the characters' names is Danny Moonstone. She is a teenage Cheyenne Indian girl, and she opens the movie with this dialogue. My father once told me inside every person there are two bears, forever locked in combat for your soul. One bear is all things good, compassion, love, trust. The other is all things evil, fear, shame, and self-destruction. I asked him which one wins. And we'll come back to Danny in a few minutes. The acts against our church have had me thinking a lot this week on the subject of evil as I'm sure it has many of you as well. The only way I can describe what happened at our home base is that it was purely evil. And like so many before me, I have wondered why God allows evil to exist. Now I know that evil exists because he has given free will to mankind. And that because of that free will, sin is <clears throat> into our world. I found a little comfort from St. Augustine this week. As he wrote that God judged it better to bring good out of evil than not to permit any evil to exist. C.S. Lewis reminded me that free will, though it makes evil possible, also makes possible any love or goodness or joy. 
that is worth having. It is because God has given me free will that I can choose to love him. I can choose to love my neighbor. I can choose to treat my neighbor as I would like to be treated. And unfortunately, there are some who use their free will to take advantage of others, to hurt others, and to commit evil acts like trying to burn down a church. The scripture tell us that there is an ongoing war between good and evil. Some argue that it began with the fall of man in the Garden of Eden. Others argue that it is much longer, older, beginning at the very throne room of heaven when Satan and his minions were cast down. Either way, we know sin, suffering, and death entered our world at the fall of man in the Garden of Eden. And it has continued ever since. The conflict has not paused. There are no peace treaties. There are no timeouts. Not even for a moment. The conflict has waged. It has raged everywhere. There is not a place on this earth where the struggle has not been known. There is not a son or daughter of Adam who has not had to face it. It is rampant now. As the time of the end of days draws nearer, the battle becomes hotter, and the hour of final victory draws closer. I'm going to very briefly summarize what the scriptures tell us about this war between good and evil. Each item that I list, you could have several sermons on or many Bible studies on any one of these things. But just know that scripture gives us the assurance that God and good will finally triumph over evil in time. So the first thing we need to know is that Satan's power is already limited by God. That evil spirits are subject to God's control. That Jesus Christ triumphed over the power of evil. That God's transforming power can reverse the effects of evil in a human life today if we will only open up and let him in and be our guide. The curse that is on creation will be removed. And Christ's final victory over evil will be expressed in a thousand year reign with his believers during which time Satan is bound. And then will come the final defeat and banishment of all the evil powers. My friends, each one of us is a part of this war. We battle every day against the forces of evil. Every temptation that enters your mind, every temptation that is placed before you comes from these forces of evil. Sin itself is evil. That reminded me of a teaching by C.S. Lewis. He says, we can never find out the strength of the evil impulse inside of us until we try to fight it. C.S. Lewis knew a lot about evil. He thought about it and he wrote about it a great deal. He lived in London when the Nazis were bombing the city every day. He knew evil, he lived through it, like so many, like all of those veterans from the World War II era. He later wrote that the greatest evils in this world will not be carried out by men with guns, but by men in white suits sitting behind desks. That quote is almost 80 years old. And sometimes I have to wonder if C.S. Lewis wasn't clairvoyant. One last quote from him today. He said, good and evil both increase at compound interest. Good and evil both increase at compound interest. 
That is why the little decisions that you and I make every day are of such infinite importance. The smallest good act performed today can capture a strategic point from which a few months from now, you may be able to go on to victories that you never dreamed possible. And an apparent, apparent trivial indulgence and lust or anger is the loss of a ridge or railway line or a bridgehead from which the enemy may launch an attack against you that would have otherwise been impossible. My friends, evil is to be overcome. It is not irresistible and it is not invincible. Good is the principle by which evil is to be overcome. And in fact, that is truly the only means that it can be overcome. Not by committing sin against sin, or passion against passion, or fighting foe against foe, but by truth against error, <coughs> blessing against curse, love against hatred, and holiness against unrighteousness. We can see good triumphant in the Bible, on Calvary, in the conversion of souls, in the purity of believers, and in the salvation of this world. As I prepare to close today, I want to remind us of a couple of teachings from Paul. Paul said in one, in one case that Christianity is like a race. From 1 Corinthians chapter 9, he says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Run so that you can earn that eternal reward. I also remind you of Paul's words from 2 Timothy chapter 4, as he knows that his final hours on earth are coming to an end. And he tells Timothy, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. That is a quick summary of Paul's teachings. That we're going to be battling against sin and evil for all of the days of our lives. And the best that we can do is to run the race. To keep on fighting. To finish the race. And at the end, you were able to say, I have kept the faith. Going back to my friend, Danny Moonstone. My father once told me inside a person, there are two bears forever locked in combat for your soul. One bear is all things good, compassion, love, and trust. The other bear is all things evil, fear, shame, and self-destruction. So I asked him, which one wins? And he told me, it's the one you feed. It's the one you feed. So are we going to feed the good bear or the evil bear? That is the challenge before us. Evil has literally visited our front door, set fire to our sanctuary tried to destroy our church and all that Bethel Park stands for. I know you are hurting today. I am there with you. Hurting. I know this is a major setback. But I also know that the people before me in this room are filled with the Holy Spirit. That you have the armor of God ready at your side to rebuild and to do battle if necessary. With God's help, like the mystical phoenix, Bethel Park will rise up from the ashes in her home and grow to be stronger than ever before, more dedicated to each other, more dedicated to the mission work that we have been called, more dedicated to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world, more dedicated to fight the evils in this world as they confront us, I have one question. Can we do that, Bethel Park? Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Yes. Can, and can we do that? Can we fight these evils? Yes. yes. One more time. Yes. 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 My friends, to the glory of God, let us begin today. Amen. 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 Amen.